What is up guys? We are live here with Pro Play Games and welcome to the Anime Next Qualifiers here in beautiful Atlantic City, New Jersey. Anime Next has been a great con so far. This is on to our second day here. First day was team battles and we saw Team Foe X PBG, his own Marcel Russell, Eddie St. Hilaire, and Ethan Mazur taking home the national championship invites. They become number players number 17, 18, and 19 to earn their invite to the prestigious national championship. We'll see who the next three players are with their invites to nationals today. At the end of Swiss today, we'll see exactly who walks away with that coveted invite. We have a few pe pretty big players in contention. And with our first round, we have Kyle versus Kyle. We got a mirror match. But the leaders are completely different. We got Janemba and Kid Goku. Now, this is a pretty interesting matchup. Uh, I've played this matchup maybe a total of like three times. It doesn't seem the worst for the Janemba player, but Kid Goku does have the ability to just do a lot of things that uh, other leaders can't do against Janemba. Primarily, he can stop himself from drawing, which is really, really cool because it's, it essentially nets you an extra card than a normal deck would net you a card against Janemba, which at the end of a grueling game where Janemba's just milling out all your resources and you're taking your own resource in the form of your deck for your opponent as well, it's definitely something that you, you might appreciate that last two or three life you have in your deck as you swing in for a lethal damage against a Janemba deck. So really big thing to note. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the chat. If all the audio is fine, please let me know in the chat as well. Uh, like I said, this is a pretty big open space room. There's a lot of cool things going on here. We got a car show right across from us. We have a uh, dubstep slash, I don't know what to call it, but they have very loud music <laughs> playing. We have rhythm games all over the, ga uh, the room actually. There's a lot of rhythm games from Japan. Uh, it's a group called Tokyo Attack, and they actually have a lot of Konami um, games, rhythm games, and other type of uh, games that are exclusive in Japan, and they bring them over here, and they have people play for free. So this this game room, almost everything here is free to play, unless you're playing for some type of prizes, just like these gentlemen are today. So pretty cool con if you guys haven't checked it out, or if you're in the area, we'll be here tomorrow till 3, or we'll be here all day today till 11 p.m., and you can come and check it out. Definitely a cool experience if you haven't had one. If you haven't been to a con yet. But uh, back to the game, we have a training buddy Krillin here that brought out his uh, good old friend Super Saiyan Son Goku. And training buddy Krillin's pretty good in this matchup. It gives you two bodies for the cost of two energy against Janemba, which things can get really out of control against a deck like Janemba that doesn't really have too much board control. And it doesn't play a very fast board control game either. It has really just one way of interacting with battle cards and that's Janemba the demon sword and the demon sword is able to just get rid of one card but sure you have leader attack you have Janemba sword attack so you do have a few ways of uh, going into battle and actually taking down battle cards but um, the kid Goku player would normally protect his assets on board as much as possible and uh, a big a big factor in this matchup is also uh, Kami Go global unifier which uh, Janemba usually have has in the main deck sometimes um and and if not it a hundred percent has it in the sideboard so having access to that card really puts kid goku in a really awkward position because it pretty much makes the kid goku not overextend and not play more than three battle cards on the battlefield at the same time this is a best of three max so this is going to be a best of three competition with swiss only no top cut this is kind of like a preliminary type of format but they're playing for a national championship invite versus the preliminaries where you play for a regional championship invite so a lot more stakes on the line but you still have that best of three sideboarding games that you're normally accustomed to and there is no top cut here so we're going to be done after i believe five rounds maybe six rounds of swiss i'll try to check back as soon as we know i, I really don't know exactly how many players we got here but I'll give you the information as soon as you relay it back to us, but uh, Kyle, Kid Goku player, is uh, looking not too shabby here with the with the one drop Kid Goku. It's definitely something that you want to see early in this in this deck. 
It's something that really gets your engine going. It's something that uh, you, you need to in order to um, successfully and consistently drop big beaters on board in the form of 30Ks that can be summoned from deck or drop. And it's also something that just lets you keep buying back 4-star ball, which you might not want to do from the deck, but definitely keep bringing the same one back from the drop area in order to net yourself an extra 5K every time. And with the combination of the Kid Goku leader here, uh, he's able to reveal that 4-star ball to not only draw a card, but also gain a 5K power boost. So essentially, his leader on the front side, if you really wanted to, can be 20K minimum by discarding a 4-star ball. And that seems like a lot of pressure for Janemba to deal with. So if he can play his cards right, he can definitely get Janemba on its heel and just strike it for a game. But we'll see if the Janemba player actually puts himself in that position where, um, you know, you don't want to find yourself in when you're playing Janemba, but sometimes it just happens because of how much pressure this deck can play. But Kid Goku player is now playing four battle cards on board, which can be dangerous, but if uh, the Kid Goku player is the Kid Goku player can make some heads-up plays by comboing off one of his battle cards before and passing his turn to the Janemba player, which will prevent him from getting any type of uh, Kami explosion from the other side of the table. Yeah, we got a Kyle Mirror match here. I'll try to go around and see exactly how many copies of each leader are uh, out in the tournament. I don't believe we have more than, um, you know, 50 players here, so it shouldn't be too hard to garner up. But uh, deck list, of course, can be found on our Facebook group, which I'll type in the chat here for you guys. Uh, it's definitely one that you want to join if you haven't already. We try to post uh, all the statistics and all the information from every one of our events uh, in the fastest time possible. And you guys can get stay up to date with how the meta is evolving and stay up to date, of course, with the most important of all, all the PBG and Bandai related events going on near you or you can just watch from home, which you are today. Thank you guys again for those of you who are tuning in today to the first event of the Pro Play Tour Season 2, the Anime Next Qualifiers. These players will not only be walking away with an invite to the national championship from Dragon Ball Super Card Game, but they'll be getting an invite to the $10,000 PPG national championship, the Players' Championship, happening in January. Yeah, eight negates uh, from the Janemba player. Very good, um, you know, very good notice on there. There's so many Janembas on board, by the way, by the way. <laughs> Guys, there's like three, four different, three different Janembas? Yeah, the, no, one, two, three, sorry, I can't count. There's uh, Agent of Destruction, there's a Reality Bender, and there's a Demon Sword on board. Jeez, uh, whether it be on the energy or anything. There's too much, too much Janemba action happening here. Even the negate has Janemba on it, which is really funny, but... Good thing to note, yeah, he's playing Whis Coercion and Dimension Magic and Mafuba. So it looks uh, safe to say he's playing a mono blue version. And he even has a Saki Demon here, which a lot of people, eh, I, I have mixed feelings about it. Saki Demons definitely uh, can be really good at times, but then it could also be really just subpar at others. So uh, Janemba player is going to go strike with Janemba here and attack a battle card. Kid Goku player is already awakened, so maybe I would just, uh, you know, start going towards the board. But thing to note here, Kid Goku player did not play off of the four battle cards on board. He just kept those four on board and just is really just praying at this point for his opponent to better have Kami. And it looks like it's paying off for him because I don't think the Janemba player has one in hand. Kid Goku player is looking through the Janemba player's drop to make sure that he didn't miss any copies of... Kami, but there's no signs of Kami in the main board for the Kid Koo player. And if I'm the Kid Koo player, I'm just, I think this is the right way to approach it. You can't always just assume that your opponent has Kid Koo. I mean, um, Tommy, but it's definitely, uh, definitely a risky play, but it has high payoff, high risk, high reward. 
Janemba player is going to grab Childish Heart Janemba from the bottom of the deck with Saki Demon's effect. That does still garner a shuffle. But Kidfu player does not feel any type of uh, resistance from the Janemba player, so he's just going to keep piling on battle cards on board, as would I, to make sure that he gets the Janemba player with as much pressure as possible. Janemba player is going to now evolve for two over the Saki Demon, and that's, uh, that's a pretty good play because now that Childish Heart Janemba at 1,900 attack, which is huge, by the way, is going to be able to start striking into the battle cards of the Kid Goku player, trying to relieve that pressure on board, but at the same time, using cards like Sensu Bean to extend his plays in order to open up that energy to evolve that Childish Heart Janemba with another Janemba from deck. So, uh, brilliant plays by the Janemba player right here. This is exactly what you want to do in order to really pressure your opponent's cards. Also, you really want to just always have access to that Childish Heart Janemba because that can really lead you into three different types of cards that you can possibly want. It can lead you into a Demon Sword, which gives you removal. It can lead you into an Agent of Destruction, which can give you Turbo Mill and a draw and an untap. And then it can also lead you into uh, the other Janembas, which you know, one of them he's not playing, the blue-yellow, uh, which can give you some untap potential on your opponent's turn, as well as a mill. And you could also, even if you really wanted to, get the Reality Bender Janemba, which uh, is also pretty good against a mirror match because it can go back to the bottom of your deck, mill your opponent for two, and you have and you still have access to that card later. So he's going to opt with the Demon Sword Janemba, which is excellent. He's going to be able to pressure with the Demon Sword Janemba, which at best can remove one of the Kid Ku's battle cards on board in battle. And then he's going to also be able to activate the ability of the Demon Sword Janemba in order to automatically remove a battle card and send it to the warp. Which is actually... Oh! And he actually chose to attack the Kid Ku's life. Which I don't know how I feel about that. He's going to use Demon Sword to put it to the bottom. Mill 2. Definitely a good target with the Deborah. Uh, of course, it's the most powerful battle card on board. One. But two... The, the good thing is that the Janemba actually sends the card that it's removing to the warp. So that's going to be really relevant because if the Kid Ku player runs out of, somehow runs out of copies of the th uh, of the of the Deborah, or maybe the, the other two Deborah or three Deborah is in, are in his life, he's not going to have access to as many Deborahs. And if the Kid Ku player can't consistently pump out the 30 case, look, wow, Kyle, actually, the Kid Ku player actually charging a Deborah, speaking about it. So now we know for certain that there's a maximum of two more copies of Deborah. And uh, I'm not sure if he has one in his drop, but if he doesn't, he might be in some trouble because that last one or last two can be in it somewhere in his life. Depending on how many you play, actually. No, I currently don't have the deck list on me right now. I believe they're being scanned into the system. But he might be playing Gogeta 7. I mean, like, he's playing, what, he's playing the Goku and the Vegeta 20k Vanillas. So it's probably not too out of the ordinary that he is playing it. But we haven't seen really anything, any Gogeta 7s at all, so maybe not. I, I do see that he has a Mass Saiyan on board. He does have a Champa, from what I see. Man, I feel like I kind of see a Gogeta 7, but not really. Oh, there it is. Yep, yep. He has a Gogeta 7. Oh. Uh-oh. How many cards in deck? I'm not sure, but uh, that should definitely be... That, that would be a pretty cool thing to have, cards in deck. Training buddy Krillin coming in. But that garners a dimension magic. Wow, really? Maybe the Janemba player just wants to open up another one for a Mafuba, maybe. Maybe he has that Mafuba in hand. Oh thank you, Zyber. I'm not I'm not uh, by far any means a, an actual commentator. I just like uh I'm talking about Dragon Ball Super and I love this game, so I appreciate you guys that appreciate the commentary. May not be the best, but 
I'll be playing at Origins, by the way, guys. So if you're at Origins uh, next week, definitely come by, say hi. I uh, really appreciate everybody that comes up and says hi, even asks me to sign autographs. I'm super you know, grateful for that. I do appreciate it. It means a lot. I'm testing quite a few decks, and uh, I've definitely done this matchup a few times. I've actually, I'm a Kid Koo player myself, but I've actually never tried the blue variant yet because I've always been so satisfied with my uh, with my red, black, blue that I've never really had to feel like, oh, let me try something else, but maybe I should. Uh, we definitely need to hit the hyperbolic time chamber very soon with Peter Catani and the guys and make sure that we uh, crack the format for certain, but we'll see exactly how the events of this weekend play off first. Wow, and the Janemba player seeing the Kami. The Kami is indeed in his deck, and the Kid player player's not going to have a very good time. Janemba is tapped out, but he's sitting there with a Zeno button. Both players hitting very vital cards in the matchup here. Kid Koo player hitting that Gogeta, being able to have that in hand, have access to it, and then the Janemba player on the other side being able to hit that Kami. I really hope that's a Kami. I'm pretty sure it is. Ooh, and he takes it. He takes the double strike from Champa. Uh, it's pretty dangerous because now the Janemba player is going down to two, and all he is a Gogeta away from losing, but Mass Saiyan is coming down for the Kid Goku player. He's going to go all in. He sees no negates, and that's, uh, that's a risky play. Oh, and he's going to have to combo out that Kami. I don't even think he has enough combo power. That might be game. Yep. Game number one goes to the Janemba player. Wow. Eh, props to the Kid Goku player. He saw an opening, and he took it, so... Great job on him. Unfortunately, Kyle was not able to see that Tommy. Honestly, J the Janemba player really messed up there. I think he should have just not comboed. Like, he should have just, like, read the, the amount of combo in his hand and just been like, yeah, I can't out-combo this and just, like, not show his cards. Because he showed his opponent the Kami. And, uh, yeah, that's a little information. And, prob like, I want to say 90% of Janemba decks or 99% of Janemba decks will have it between the main or side. But... Knowing that he has it in the main now is just information that he didn't have to give out because he never showed it to his opponent anyways. And he was dead on the lethal. So, honestly, little things like that uh, um, can definitely, you know, shake things up. So, you, you want to keep that information, uh, you know, to yourself if, if possible. I don't think he had Leader Negate available because he had a, he had a, uh, he had a die on his Leader. But honestly, I have the worst memory in the world, so that could have been a beam. Yeah, he can't have uh, Fu in his sideboard, so. But that will be brought up to a judge after this match. Um, we have a strict rule here at PBG on streaming. We cannot interfere with the match. So unless that gets played in the match and called by the other player, we cannot act as uh, judges from the outside and hand out game losses and things like that. So uh, we'll leave it up to um, any of the judges that may be around uh, if they do see that or catch that. Uh, otherwise, it will be brought up to the judge after this round. But yeah, definitely, you can't, <laughs> can't have food. You know, I actually ran into that last week. I was making a Janemba deck, and I'm like, wow, why don't we just play... What was it? Um, I think it was like Dimensional. Yeah, it was Dimensional Banish of Food. It was a 5 drop. I'm like, wow, why is nobody playing this card? It seems really good against Broly. And I was like, oh yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't play this card. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's why. That's why nobody plays it. Silly me. So I actually decided uh, with Burst Energy Super Saiyan Bardock, which is actually uh, really good because he's a 4 drop. That's the maximum energy cost of a card that you can play in Janemba. And... Um, and it gets rid of like barrier cards that, can, that players sometimes just leave inactive because they're like, oh, you can't interact with me. Ha 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 ha. So it's actually very good against the uh, Path of Greatness. Son Goku, 
and it's uh, really good against Challenge Heart Jimbo as well. Yeah, it's easy to forget. I've actually seen, like, I've seen this happen, like, I think <laughs> this is, like, my third time me seeing this happen, where the Janemba player always has a scientist food in the sideboard. It's like, what? I don't understand. Like, what do you even sign that in against, though? I don't, I, I just don't even, like, oh, oh, actually, never mind. It, it's actually really good against hand destruction. Like, if you play against Lord Slug as Janemba, I would love to have a scientist food, so. I guess I could see why. Oh yeah, Godzilla. Godzilla's gonna be crazy, guys. By the way, we've been profiling the Naruto Burudo card game, which is pretty much the same card game as the Godzilla one that's gonna come out. So they're, they're gonna be able to be played against each other. So you're gonna have Godzilla versus Naruto, which is gonna be sick because as they keep coming out with licensing, like, are you guys familiar with like Jump Force? You know how you have like all the Shonen heroes, you know, you have Naruto versus Yami Yugi versus, you know, um, one, uh, yeah, I think it has One Punch Man. Um, does it? I don't know. Uh, it has One Piece. You know, it has everything. So Bandai has the licensing to all this stuff. Like Bandai is literally like the monopoly of having all these licenses. So I, I'm really excited to see what licenses they bring on next because it's actually going to be really, really fun to see like what we can actually uh, move on and keep doing. Like we're going to have JoJo's probably versus Naruto. We're going to have Godzilla versus My Hero Academy. Like it's going to be super, super sick. So definitely hop on Chrono Clash System if you haven't already. We actually have a Facebook group, which I'm going to link on here uh, in order to stay tuned with all the organized play that we're going to be having for the game. Uh, because it's really really interesting and the Chrono Clash system like resource management game Honestly, I'd never seen a better resource system until Dragon Ball Super came out and now After this Chrono Clash system came out. I'm just like hmm This is actually a really hard choice to make between what has a better resource system Dragon Ball Super or Chrono Clash system. It's that good, but we've been demo demoing it all weekend this is the first official demo in the United States. Like, this does not exist anywhere. Um, and uh, people have been able to actually touch the cards. They have the back. They have everything already, you know, pretty much designed for the cards. We have the whole spoiler. Um, but, uh, and it's been great. Everybody's loved it. It's been such a fun game to play. Very balanced. Nothing seems super OP. It's just really fun to play. Like, genuinely fun and addictive. So definitely go and join that group if you haven't already, guys. That is the link right there. Uh, that's going to be for all the Chrono Clash games. So you're going to be able to follow Godzilla information on there too, but Godzilla isn't until September. So the group right now is called Naruto Bruto Card Game in parentheses Chrono Clash System because the game is actually like Chrono Clash System, like technically, but uh, every time a new expansion comes out, we'll change the name of the group, but we'll keep it always Chrono Clash System, PPG Pro Play Tour, so definitely stay tuned for that for organized play and what things bandai is going to bring to the table as far as like getting players to actually you know care about another card game which is going to be really easy because this card game is not really like a collectible card game where you have to open boxes and boxes and boxes you just spend like 60 bucks 70 bucks out the gate and you have a master set of each set that comes out so um like for right now i think you can pre-order both from pbg spend your 60 70 bucks and boom you have everything that there is in Naruto Baruto until September and then September comes out and then Godzilla comes out and then you spend another 60 70 bucks and then boom you have all of Naruto and Godzilla and you can build anything you want there's deck construction you don't have to play with like the cards out of the box like you do with Keyforge like there's deck customization which I love but uh, no short prints no secret rares no $300 cards very very fun Yeah, you can swap cards before, uh, between decks later, yeah, exactly. Yeah, buy it, you're done. Release date is June 28th. If you guys want to pre-order, please check out our website. I think we posted the link today, so I'm going to try to grab it for you guys.
but like I said, super duper fun. People have been having a blast so far. Here we go. We got the link, boys. We got the link. So uh, the reason it's so much here, we're, we're actually, if you go on TCG Player, I think you can find the, I'll see if I can give you guys a TCG Player link because it actually shows we have a uh, special like alternative way of buying it where we don't give you the box that it comes in, which is just cheaper because we don't have to ship like a, a $20 box that's like a lot of money in the, uh, to, to ship in general. So you guys can actually go here instead and buy the actual... Ah, oh, where am I? There's so many tabs open. There we go. So there, you, you can buy it without the box or you can buy it with the box. You see, with the box is almost like $10 more. It's just because we need to ship the box. But uh, don't, don't be uh, mistaken. There's a lot of websites selling it for like $28, but then you go to checkout and they hit you with like $20 of uh, shipping. So be careful with who you buy it from. And of course with PPG, we always uh, we always make sure that we fulfill your pre-orders. We never cancel things. So if it ends up being a short print thing, which it probably will, because it's a new card game. Uh, remember Keyforge. Keyforge came out, or actually go back to Dragon Ball Super Set 1. Remember when that dropped? Remember when we had like $120 Set 1 Galactic Battle Boxes? Yeah, Pepper Ridge Farm remembers. So Crisis Crusher Sun Goku, that's a pretty interesting addition here. Um, I'm assuming from the side deck for the Jennifer player. Um, it's definitely something that you want to have against Kid Goku especially. It's very powerful in a way that it does shut down your opponent from playing the one drop and keeping it on board. The Kid Goku player can actually play around it a little bit by going to turn three, playing the one drop, then using two energy immediately to bring out a 30k. But then after that, the Crisis Crusher will immediately bring it off board once the Janemba player starts his turn with its ability once per turn destroying one one drop card. So uh, the, it puts it in a situation where now the Kid Goku player no longer has an enchantment that reads every turn, once per turn, pay two energy, bring out a 30k. It's more like it's a one and done scenario. So it makes it a little bit more fair for the Janemba player and more manageable to actually get rid of these cards because usually the Kid Goku player only sees one or two copies of that card max. So it definitely does help in order to relieve some pressure from the Janemba player. So good side in by the Janemba player here. Uh, Crisis Crusher is something that can be played in almost any deck. So it's a very good silver bullet against this Kid Goku deck. It doesn't give you the win automatically because there, as you can see, there's a lot of two drops and a lot of things that can really um, still beat your face in while your Crisis Crusher is only preventing you from getting beat by one drops. But uh, the good thing is, too, the training buddy Krillin can actually remove the Crisis Crusher Sun Goku from board. So it's kind of like Kid Goku already has an inherent uh, anti-sideboard plan for the Janemba player, but you need to be able to play the training buddy Sun uh, Krillin. Oh, and he crits one from life. He's going to really need those to get rid of that Crisis Crusher because he's already got one on board. He critted one. I think I saw another one in the drop already. So that might be all the, the training buddy Krillins that uh, Kid Goku has in its deck you usually see two or three copies of the card maybe post sideboard but definitely something that you know kind of relieves some of the uh, some of the floodgatey effects that Janemba is going to be able to uh, pull out from the sideboard Oh, and there goes another trading buddy, Krillin, and this time he hits the Crisis Crusher. Nice. So great that he was able to get that. Uh, and, and I think that's the last copy of his Krillin, so it might be. It's either the third or fourth copy. So. Yeah, huge play here. He's also awakening. Jeez, and now he's got a Shenron out too. That Shenron's going to be huge, guys. I, I Honestly, I haven't seen Shenron out of the... The sideboard or main board of Kid Goku, this is the first time. I don't know if this is a trend, but I like it. I love Shenron. 
and I love any reason to be able to play that card because I feel like that card is just so valuable in, in the terms that it can do so many different things. That Shenron can do uh, one of three things, by the way, guys. Uh, it can untap two energy and draw you a card. It can uh, also uh, bring out a 15k or lower, I believe, from the drop. Play it and then draw a card. And then the last effect is it can give 5k uh, to a card and crit. Which, I mean, almost all of them are good against Shenembo, to be honest. Let me see if I can pull that card up. Yeah, choose one battle card with energy cost two or less from your drop and play it. Wow, so Shenron can keep bringing back training buddy Krillin, and that's really annoying for the Janemba player. Holy cow, is that annoying. Relentless Sword Janemba into the Training Buddy Krillin, which might actually bite the Janemba player in the behind because that's not a card that you want to put in the drop. Well, there's another copy anyways, so I guess it's, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but if he didn't have any more Training Buddy Krillins in the grave, then it would be a terrible play to attack into it because then the Shenron could keep reviving it. But because he has another copy anyways, it's actually not that relevant. So K2 player trying to protect that training buddy Krillin. If he's going to pop anything, he should pop the 2 drop here. Not only does it have more battle power. Oh, actually, Shenron's not a bad choice either. That card can legitimately continue to... Sure, it digs him one deeper into his deck, which is what Janemba wants him to do. But that power, that effect is way too powerful. Those, effect, those three different effects can be way too powerful and can definitely bite you in the behind because it's just too much pressure. I guess Shenron would have brought out a training buddy Krillin, which would have brought out a two drop, like for just free, just free. Like he would have just gotten two uh, ways of pressure, and he would have drawn a card. Like, that Shenron was putting in the work. The most massive of works. By the way, thank you all for the 150 viewers we have live here. This is by no means the best PBG stream, but we felt like we had to broadcast this for you. We normally don't stream at cons. The lighting is always terrible. It's not really our event, so we can't tell people what to do uh, as far as like the lighting and the, and the situation and the internet specifically. Uh, so it's kind of like we have to do whatever they give us. We have to make do with whatever. So uh, um, at least it's not off a phone, right, guys? Because we always try to set ourselves at, at, at a um, you know at a higher standard. And uh, I'm sorry we couldn't bring you guys a live cam and uh, you know Dusty, but he was out of town. He's I think he's in Europe. You know, which he he, he deserves a vacation. So I'm glad he's doing that. We're, you're you're gonna be able to catch us at Origins, by the way. So um, that's going to be really, really fun. I'm sorry that the camera and the angles aren't the best. Dusty is the mastermind, and I give him full credit for this. So um, shout out to my team uh, that was able to actually put this together. We have a very small team with us this weekend, but uh, they've been really carrying the team, and I really appreciate it. Uh, the viewers really does do help, and the support and appreciation does really uh, also help. So thank you guys again. Yeah, I don't know who records on phone anymore. It's just, uh... <laughs> it's 
No, it looks so bad. I was just like, dude, you can't do any better. <laughs> I was telling my guys. I was like, I mean, if this is the best you can give me, I really can't complain, I guess. But um, I, I'm not the IT guy or stream guy. I'm just here to uh, talk and entertain as much as I can until they pull me away and need my services. But uh, it looks pretty calm down here. There's a lot of things to do here, which is good because people aren't just like constantly here. Like if you've ever seen me at a pro play tour, you'll see that I'm just like running around everywhere with like a, like, like a chicken without a head. <laughs> but here, because everybody has like a bunch of things to do, like they're either demoing, uh, they're playing casually with their friends, uh, they're like, you know, enjoying the car show, or they're playing karaoke or rhythm games. There's even a Fortnite tournament here. Like, there's so many things to do, which is really, really cool. I definitely advise anybody who hasn't been to a con uh, to definitely go there. You know, Origins is coming up, then Otacon, and then Gen Con, and uh, we're going to be at Supercon also, which is in Florida. It's, it's just a really fun experience. There's so much stuff to do. A lot of cool cosplay, a lot of cool things to buy, too. It's actually pretty dangerous. I bring my wife every single time to these cons, and I'm like, why do I keep doing this to myself? I, I keep losing... You know, all this <laughs> she keeps wanting to buy all these pins and uh, anime, uh, you know, things. And it's just like, ah, this is the worst. But holy cow, guys, this Kid Goku deck is putting it in right now. This is just a complete massacre. But he might be close to decking out, to be honest. So uh, the German player might be favored here. I honestly can't tell how many cards in deck, but if there's like four or something, the Geneva player has it because he's at like four life. But the Geneva player is at four life. That is significant. Oh my God, and a TN. That's not what you want to see. If the Geneva player would have been tapped out there, it would have been devastating. Thankfully, he did keep up one energy, so he's going to have to choose here, guys. Uh, the TN makes it so that the Janemba player can no longer play a bean and untap an energy. He's going to have to actually pay one energy for a bean which is actually super, super important because he has an unbreakable on board. So he can't do both, right? Also, the negate, the dimension magic, sure, he can take from his life, but he's not going to be able to untap energy. And if he uses that one last energy for dimension magic, then he's not going to be able to uh, have any energy standing. So it looks pretty grim. He's going to have to take the life here. He's almost at no cards in hand. He has three cards in hand. K Poo player still has a lot of gas in hand in order to combo on top of all his cards, but it is important to note that the Shenron cannot attack. So, at least that's the break for the general player here. Not sure if he can actually kill him from 3 to 0 here, because he also does have a leader in the gate. And he actually just drew a bean, which he probably might let go of now, depending on how much he combos. But this Sun Goku is already going up to 20, and I believe that 4 star ball gives a 10k to a vanilla, so that's a 30k right now. 30k, it looks like Janemba's gonna take it. Janemba sitting at two. We have another 20k vanilla going out. Remember, Kid Goku's backside allows your first vanilla combo to give it 10k instead of 5k. Oh, he actually decides for dimension sure magic here off the life. Starting at 2 p.m. Please make sure your name is on the list if you would like to play. He's gonna use one energy for a Kid Goku, and he's gonna use the last two energy most likely for a 30k, and if he does. That might just draw out that final negate from that Janemba, and he might even be able to swing for game with the Kid Goku. Yep, and it looks like that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Attack with the Deborah, bait out the negate, attack with Kid Goku, and dump. It's important to note here that the Janemba player will have to lose a card here from hand in order to activate that negate. Yep, he's going to pitch Sensu Bean. Leader, ability, activated. Kid Goku, for game. It's not lethal yet. Let's see if he got it. 10, 20, 30? If that's the first vanilla. And that's the handshake. Stuck with the unbreakable Goku in hand. That TN really helping the Kid Goku player just finalize the game and Kyle with Kid Goku moves on to round number two.